Here we go then, Vici Gaming on the verge of making it through to the top three for a second consecutive year and only Ten one game away from LGD having to win two straight now against the team who've won eight in a row. LGD's turn to Interesting to see that Vici are the ones that actually ban out the clock. Maybe they want to actually force the gyro ban or they're actually thinking, yeah, it's going to be gone. They're also leaving more stuff open then. Sure, they removed the Bounty Hunter, but Clockwork is not a standard early ban. So because of the Gyro Lesh being banned out, Lina is available. So this It feels like Vichy Gaming, out. they have the edge right now with the draft. Like, I'm not saying that they, are, they will have a better draft. It's just like, you know, that usual mind game with the first two bans and into first pick. I just feel like they get the better trade. Yeah, this is what I felt like LGD should have done last game. The gyro has been strong, but Lina, I think, has been proven to be a little bit stronger, even if her win rate hasn't suggested as much. Shadowfiend and Earthshaker. Shadow has not had the best success at the main event, but ES has had a really good success at the... If we discount the group stages and just take the main event. Well, I mean, LGD just... They had a really good game today with the SF, so maybe that's why they go back to it. So they just they destroyed the user's pool earlier with SF and maybe, so... That's, you know, it's very common from teams to just go back to what you won with when you, you know, yeah, definitely. have a tough game. I like the Winter Wyvern pick against Shadowfiend, though. The only downside, of course, is that he can still raise you, but your ulti is so good, and sometimes in the later portion of the game, you can save someone just by freezing them with Wait, the cold. What's this Juggernaut ban for? I was going to say, uh, what? What? that is very surprising. What is going on? Who, did ban who banned Juggernaut? Uh, LGD? Vichy. Oh, Vichy. Okay, so... There might be a strat that we are not aware of. I mean, those teams, so we need to take into account that they might have scrimmed with each other oh, before that match. So that, that could explain it, because obviously we haven't seen any Juggernaut with those picks. I mean, Wyvern and Lina are both really good versus Juggernaut. Definitely. I feel so, too. It doesn't make sense on paper, but maybe they're just... I mean, that's one of those traumatized bands, right? You're, you got crushed by Jugger at some point, and... Probably by LGD, you're just like, no, not playing that again. I mean, it could also have been a misclick. Uh, you know, sometimes it's as simple as that. Like, you, I don't know. You, you never know. It's pretty oh, It's pretty hard to misclick Pan, though, when you're drafting. It could happen. Know. Like, it, it can be anything, so it could be because... Have I mean, you, have you ever misclicked a Pan? I'm not saying I have. But <laughs> 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 you're defending this, you're defending this guy. It's, it's super I mean, unlikely. So, so they banned Juggernaut because it made a lot of sense. And obviously getting SF and Juggernaut is a deadly combo. And it, it's one of the so far. <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm gonna help you out. They banned Juggernaut because Juggernaut is good at dire side taking Roshan with SF. Thank you. Sounds like a That's a much good better reason. <laughs> good job, but, um, I mean, going back to the draft, um, also Winter Wyvern was first phase banned by LGD, I, I, I think, first game, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So now they're getting basically all they want, Vichy Gaming, um, and LGD on the... I think they're just going to go back to something very standard. I think so, but it's quite easy to protect your Shadow Fiends farm early on when you have a Shaker in your team. Whether it's an offlane Shaker or a mid Shaker or, you know, support mid Shaker, that doesn't really matter. I think this is a pretty solid start for LGD as well. But with the current like main stage meta, I think Vici have a really dream start. I think they didn't ban Darkseer, so I think they kind of have to take Darkseer at this point, or Vici will immediately take it up. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> I, if they don't pick it here, I have no idea why. Hmm. Isaac Ice is just looking at it right now. You know, he's. I mean, they're still Tusk too for Yao, which he plays very, very well, and they're very comfortable with. Pick with the only problem is they don't have the Lina to pair it with in the offlane. Rubik. Oh, true. They just, it seemed like a denied pick again. Well, it I'm not saying it's bad for LGD, but... You're denying FYI's Rubik, but you're leaving Ice 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 Darks here when there's Selena and Winter Wyvern? I strongly disagree with that. I think that's giving too much credit to the Rubik, even if FY is a god. I, I think it's just way too strong of a combination. Indeed. And it's definitely something they could get right now. I think Vici, they want to pick it, but they're just thinking, why are they letting us have this? So right now they're trying to figure out LGD gaming. But LGD are only showing a Rubik, Shaker, 
and of course the SF. It's pretty hard to tell where they want to go so far. I always feel like Shaker plus Rubik, it's a bit too defensive. So, it, I mean, I'm just trying to think if it's going to be a Shaker offlane or a Shaker support. I mean, more or less, most of the games where we saw Rubik and Earthshaker, it's it a high, higher percentage of the Earthshaker going offlane. Mm -hmm. Because, like you mentioned, it's just too defensive and weak as a support duo. Agreed. You can't really push towers as the downside. You can maybe gank someone. That's doable. Fisher has long range. Like, your smoke gank's pretty effective but uh, you won't get a reward for it, you won't get a tower. I don't think it's the best support duo. Anti-mage has been banned every second phase so far. For good reasons as well. We haven't had the chance to see uh, Luna come back as well and make, nope. her, uh, make her mark. I think that LGD actually have a good Luna in it so far. So they didn't go for the Ducks here, like Wara suggested, but they are going for, once again, the Razor which means that they are going to be able to play at a faster pace as well, like the last game, and their lanes are much stronger right now. Yeah, Razor is very nice. I mean, they have Dragon Slave, they have Winter Wyvern in their second spell, and then they have the Plasma Field as well. So pushing high ground against Vichy looks extremely hard right now. And SF, while he farms quickly, he doesn't scale super well into late game. A lot of late game heroes can just straight up go on him. So. Especially versus, uh, I think like, I feel like Lina Wy Wyvern, like those two heroes, they're very good at you know playing late game team fights with SF. No, oh, Lina scales really well. Like yeah. she, despite her being a nuker, and you think of her like that, she, fire is so late game is super strong. If you go Bloodstone Shiva something like that, you you become a beast on uh, Lina. It's also super difficult to itemize against her. Like, yeah. Lincoln's is pretty weak. BKB is also pretty weak. You need to like hex her, right? That's, yeah. You yeah. need disables on her. Mm -hmm. At least that's what the Shaker's there for. Hmm. What are the op obvious good options here for LGD? I kind of like Luna. I think they could have a really good pushing lineup with Luna, but yet again, you guys mentioned it. All right, there it goes. But like the, the problem with that is that there's a lot of anti-push on Vichy's side. And even though they have SF Mech and Luna, it's still going to be tough to break high ground. I mean, they have good synergy between those two heroes. The Auras work really well together. Lunar Blessing, the presence of the Dark Lord. But as you say, breaking high ground is super difficult. The team fight spells, Winter Wyvern is going to have a blast with his ulti. And Lina can, in the early game, shut down uh, Luna pretty hard if she doesn't build HP early on. Have a blast. I see what you did there. Nice. <laughs> nice catch. I mean, yet again, going back to LGD's lineup, do they actually need to rush pushing high ground with what VG have if it's a Razor on the same thing? They don't really need to go mm -hmm. high ground that early. And you don't have to worry about it too much. So do you think they should have picked a safer late game carry? Maybe. I mean, Luna is still fairly strong late game. It's just yeah. that sometimes she has limitations. Hmm. I'm Although, curious, what do you think that VG Gaming want to look into now, Mad? Just well, the thing is, We've seen Razor mid last game, and I would, I, I thought it would be a Lina mid at first, by, like by the looks of it, because I don't think Winter Wyvern plus Lina support is such a good support combo, and also Lina is pretty good with SF to have. So I'm assuming it's a safe lane Razor, and there's still a Lina mid. And in that case, you know, it's a lineup that comes online quite early. I feel like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was looking for, like a very early aggression. I think, you know, like, LG Gaming, they don't really have a way to answer that aggression so early. Once they get their BKBs, then it's going to be a bit different. And then into later in the very late game, I feel like, again, VG Gaming might have an edge. Yeah, on, that's so it's like, you know, this like momentum change. That's a strong we've pick. Seen something. I was thinking about Tuscar for them, but Undying probably plays out even better. And that forces people to go on the Tombstone. Even if Shadowfin and Luna kills it easily, it, it still draws attention away from Razor. And I know we, we might have said earlier during the tournament that heroes, for example, like Razor and Dying together, if you, let's say, you last pick a Pugna or something, it's a bit all in because they all do the same. But one, once you, one you have, like, the good thing about Lina is that it's a hero that by her, like, herself alone brings so much disable and catch potential that you actually can. You can actually run heroes like this, that raise, raise your undying. You're not going to get overwhelmed by, like, for example, split push Ten or just like mobile heroes. Five seconds but the uh, lineup is once again 
from what I see right now, it's more fast-paced than what LGD have. LGD takes more time, they need more time to come online, whereas Vichy's lineup is much more, they want to fight as soon as possible. LGD also doesn't have the best high ground defense right now. They have Shaker, who's amazing, of course. Rubik is decent, can be good, but they really don't have much against the high ground pressure. From I, don't, I don't think it's going to be a Shaker uh, offlane anymore. I think this is a Shaker support because now with Luna, Rubik, Shaker, they have a lane that's strong enough. And yeah, I, I, I'd like to think that is a Tusk offlane. Yeah, I, I mean, we've seen from LGD the last time when they picked Tusk, it's exclusively for yeah. Okay. But he played the support once, though. Yeah, it was because maybe Xiao 8 doesn't play. Doesn't play it, so. Yeah, I think this time we might have Xiao 8 on, on the Shaker and yeah, on the Tusk. And as for Vichy Gaming, they're looking for an offlaner or it's an undying offlane, and then they're looking for a support. I'm not quite sure. Which lineup do you believe in more, Milini? Mm. Just looking at these two drafts, because LGD have the late game, but... Do you like I, I, Spirit I think Baker here? Like, any... I like it, actually. I think it can be very good to control the Luna as well in the SF. How about you, Ben? Do you like it? I think Rubik and Arshik are already pretty good versus SB. That's what we talked about earlier. Tusk is also pretty good to counter-initiate. Uh, it does cause a lot of havoc in the fights. Oh. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, well. What happened? LGD! <laughs> Oh, that's a problem. That why, why Sniper? Last time we saw it, it was versus the Pugna Ward as well as the Tombstone. That's the main reason why I thought it was decent. And Tusk is good as Sniper. Okay, Sniper is the final pick. Uh, we've been surprised by it once before, and we've been surprised by it again. Let's go to game two then, with the original Lone Druid. LD, it's all yours. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Blitz, after 6.84 hit, we thought we were free of Mr. Ho Ho Ha Ha. But Vici Gaming refuses to let him die. This is twice now we've seen him here at the main event. I always knew he was going to continue you, to come back. You believed in the old man. There's just no way that he goes from being played that much to absolutely <laughs> nothing. But Vici Gaming, they pick him again. And this is a strong hero, LD. This is a really underrated hero, I feel. Tell me why. I think that against a hero like Shadowfiend 1, he beats it. Two, it's really hard for the Earthshaker to initiate. Even if you get the Fissure off on him, LGD don't have the best way to distance close. He absolutely destroys the Luna in that sense, and same with the Rubik. Like, the Rubik doesn't really want anything that the Sniper has. Uh, maybe the Assassinate, but the mana cost for it is a little bit too high. And getting in range to spell steal is, is quite difficult as well. The, the Shrapnel is nice if you can get it, and you always get those three charges when you steal it, which does help, but... Yeah, this is, this is Vici Gaming showing a lot of, a lot of strength and, and confidence in the little fella. And with that, we'll get underway here, folks. It's game two. LGD down in a hole here, 0 to 1, as Vici Gaming have gone undefeated here at the main event thus far. Quite possibly the most convincing lower bracket run we've ever seen here at TI. They're not done yet, though. And LGD certainly capable of mounting a comeback. The lanes are going to be interesting. It looks like LGD sending four heroes towards this bottom rune, and they potentially even go into an aggressive trialing here. For now, Xiao 8 may protect the Shadow Fiend mid, but it looks like they're doing something unconventional here with the laning setup. Yeah, and they can afford to get away with this because you know that uh, Vici Gaming's lanes are probably going to be dual lanes at the same time. There's an Undying in the game, which usually tells you that, especially if it's an Ice 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 Undying, it's probably going to be Fenrir either camping mid and then rotating top. But if he sees that aggressive trialing at bottom, then he might just opt to switch. But Luna against... The Razor isn't terrible because the Luna has such fast move speed. You can get away with the Static Link really quickly, and you have a lot of offensive potential with the Lunar Blessing, but it does look like they're just going to go to the standard setups. They were just trying to secure the room. Now we saw FY up to some shenanigans here in the tree line, I mean, trying to ensure that there's no blocking of creeps into the trees. He, the ping does come out here. Did he actually get the right tree? Yeah, it looks like he's cleared out the path, potentially. Uh, no, guess not. So the creeps are going to hide out for now. And that will pull the lane back a bit. He has opted for the light strike right early, so it isn't going to be the aggressive lane that we that we saw that we expected might come out. Yao should be able to get his levels here with the pullback. Yeah, but at top, the Winter Wyvern does go top. And this is what I was talking about. The Undying plus Winter Wyvern combo is incredibly strong. The Arctic Burn plus the Zombies just make it so hard to bite into anything. You just can't move. I mean, even Luna is going to have trouble getting away from that. 
Nice shards here on the bottom lane, though. Yao catches out Hal. He doesn't quite keep him under the tower. He's just going to go to work oh, with the gonna fight him. His damage being stolen, but Hal's going to die to this. It's a totally unexpected first blood. Yao, normally not known for dominating the lanes early. His real strength lies in the team fights, but he found a sweet catch there. And FY's just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, Hal. You're on your own, buddy. And the Razor's not supposed to lose that matchup. That's why you pick a Razor so your supports can go and do other things. You can go for the dual lanes as a result. You can just continue to stack and pull, but Yao winning this lane helps him so much. He's going to get the boots off the bat. He can even decide to go for a bottle if he wants at this point. And this Razor's going to struggle now. And how that level one static link does not take as much damage as you think it would. Yeah, and then he even ran back in, and he could have tried to immediately retreat, but they're going on top now as they catch on Silo, the slow stack up, as you mentioned, Blitz, and he's on the run slowly, though. Zombies just whittling away at him. They'll have another decay, and Silo will go down. The trade is there for Vici up top, but it's the expected kill. The one bottom was the one we didn't really see coming, and now let's take a look here at the mid lane. There's been some Earthshaker support for maybe. No actual goes from Xiao Wei, but just threatening to move in. It was all scouted here by a Hill Ward, but it does mean that maybe he's getting his CS already 10 and 2. Should make it easier for him to lane against the little dwarf here. Yeah, but Super, he can get help at any point, and once he starts to get the levels of the Shrapnel, this lane's going to even out again, but that top lane for me is a little bit... Uh, concerning because Ice Ice Ice, it's a really good hero against the Luna. When you get the Undying, one decay pretty much puts her at nearly 450 HP. Another decay puts you at 300. One Arctic Burn hits take a, takes away a quarter. You have to be incredibly careful. Not to mention the auto attack damage of a, an Undying in his prime when the stacks really come out. They make their go on to Fenrir. They pull him back into the creep camp and he takes a lot of damage. Fissure follow up with the Tombstone's gonna look to turn this one. They need to back out quickly. Are they gonna focus it? Oh, they will kill it off. It's only level one. So they get the Tomb, they get the Winter Wyvern kill, and a bit unexpected, I guess, the rotation there from the Earthshaker. Normally he's just going to sit mid and protect the Shadow Fiend, but it does catch Vici Gaming off guard here as LGD, once again, they jump into the lead in terms of kills, now leading 2-1. to one. I actually think they might have been able to turn it down, or turn it around if he was able to get the Splinter Blast off, and he was just about to. The slow might have been enough for Ice 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 to just man fight, and the damage would have been enough for him to kill the Undying, or uh, the Rubik, but... Mm -hmm. It was just that split-second timing, and the amount of damage they have with the Lunar Blessing allows them to take them the Tombstone really quickly. For now, Super sitting back and forming the mid lane. Sets the 13 and 4 creep score, but he is beginning to get out CS here by Navy, who's instead looking for Xiaowei. Went in a bit too deep. The ward scouted him out. A good fissure. Oh, not good enough. Super barely able to squeeze his way through. He'll get the last hit. He'll get the free kill, and now they've got to know there's a ward in the neighborhood. They may try to deward it, but they're going to have to wait until somebody comes back with it. For now, Xiao Wei, he's only got the two observers, no sentries on the Rubik, so this will continue to protect the sniper for some time. And he's actually losing the lane pretty badly in terms of CS splits, 24 to 6, so he really did need that kill. Yeah, it's a matchup nowadays where sniper will struggle. Uh, you need some form of help, and in this mid lane, what also hurt him is that he wasn't able to get the bounty rune. The Shadow Fiend was. The Shadow Fiend felt incredibly safe, and as soon as he hit level 2, he pretty much just raised to get farm, got that quick bottle, and it was almost impossible at that point for Super to be able to get aggressive. Even though you have the great attack animation on Sniper, the damage for maybe is he's almost doubling him up, and he's moving in for a potential kill here. The attack speed slow comes out, though. Just threatening. Xiao was in position on the low ground with the Fissure, but doesn't end up committing for it. And they have found the shards bottom. Yao trying to pull the lane back here. Slow down the push, which Hao and FY are mounting. Both getting good experience bottom now, and Despite the first blood, it is just on paper a very tough matchup for Tusk to really get active in the lane. You can see it. Only 4 CS here at 5 minutes, but he is getting his levels. Vici Gaming trying to pull ahead here now in the bottom lane. Yeah, and it's going to take Ice 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 really doing a lot of work at top for Vici to kind of center out their lanes. Because even though Super did get that kill onto the Earthshaker, it was split. And the Shadow Fiend can just go to the jungle and farm a whole lot more than he can. So he has to start getting active either by pressuring the Shadow Fiend a little bit more, or looking for the counter-initiation game. And that means both are unlikely, and Ice 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 has to do something about this top lane, or they just have to go into three mans. I think these are the two options for Vici Gaming right now. So it's interesting, the, the little ward battle we've seen going on in the mid lane. They dropped two sentries. I think they expected Xiao Eight had warded, but in fact, he had not. And he just chose to go the other way. He wrapped around to the south, he knew there was a hill ward towards mid, and so he's dropped two I'd say a little bit unusual wards given their their draft here uh, off in the Radiant Jungle. What what do you make of these? What do these tell you about like the way LGD want to approach the game? 
I think one, they want to be able to invade the jungle early and often. They just don't want VG Gaming to use that as a resource. And it's also in case they go for the stack, they can go for the smoke gank. It's a sniper. You can kill him really easily. And uh, and they've got great smoke gank heroes. The snowball, the fissure, long range initiation. Exactly. But at the same time, I mean, they aren't stacking. And they're pretty much relying on these lanes right now, which isn't a good sign for VG. Now, last game, we saw them up to a, a bit of a hotter start. Once they got that blink dagger, it was the turning point. LGD for now, bringing Yao back towards bottom. He continues to get his levels, hits five. They, they really are focusing on trying to secure Maybe's farm here, realizing that Silar is, is having an easier time since it's been mostly just ice, ice, ice here the past couple minutes. MMY also in position just to protect him. No real big moves yet from either team. Still waiting on the Tuskar to hit level six, the Luna to get her Eclipse. For now, just kind of a stalling game. As it's the bottom tower that looks like it may go down first. One auto attack away from deny range. So with this next wave coming out, there's a catapult here. Vichy are going to go for this, and I guess the question is, does LGD try to hold? They are burning Chow Aiden. Oh, meanwhile, top they're going to force Silar to TP and does make it out. Tombstone there. They continue to chase, and now the courier. Oh, not the courier. Sorry, the zombie getting picked off. Still chasing MMY on the run. He will make it out, and they aren't going to get the tower top. So. Can LGD hold bottom? That's the next big question. I think they can. With Shao 8 here, they can get a lot of TP rotations in. The Luna can't come over, in, but the Rubik can. The Shadow Fiend should have a TP. He doesn't have the best mana pool to work with and no rune. But if they want to go for this defense, they probably could. But now that the Catapult's here, I think it's unlikely. You probably just go for the Fissure block and then hopefully go for the Tower Deny. Maybe if they can trap somebody out of position. I don't think they have the damage, though. Oh, and actually, Silar okay. rotates well, in early. With this, they want to go for it. And they're going to make their move. How and FY. How's going to get caught out? The Fissure connects on two. Beautifully placed by Shao. And even MMY joining the fight. They turn it, though, with the stun from FY. Massive damage from the support Lina, who scurries away. No more mana here, but there are bottle charges on Yao. And they're going to get off the Lucent Beam. He'll have the shard soon. He needs to stun. He does connect on Yao, but the Sigil flies high. Maybe even rotating in. It's a full team defense bottom. The Dwarf will turn it. Cleaning up the scraps. Makes it a two for two. The tower was killed off by FY in the end, so they still get the tower there, Blitz. Despite the massive rotation from LGD. I mean, the tower had 137 HP. You know that it's going to go down, guaranteed. But what matters more is what they got off of it. They were able to kill the Razor, they killed the Lina, and all it costs you is a Rubik and a Tusk. You take that trade every single time. Kao is already not doing great because of that early start. He has 50 CS, and relative to this game, it's okay. But he also has two deaths to back it up. And VG Gaming, they just need more out of this. They don't have heroes that can jungle. They don't really have heroes that can just fall back and farm all game, whereas LGD do. LGD can do James ancient stacks. They can do jungle stacks. They have a lot of heroes that can play defensively in. So the onus is on VG Gaming to get aggressive in this part of the game. Well, FY might like to have a word with you. He's already cracked level 6 here. So he was the big winner, I guess, as far as experience goes. He's got the Laguna Blade. He's scouted out here right now. But LGD, true to form in the last game. They look for a fairly early smoke timing. Moving on top there, scouted out. Fenrir on the run. They want now, it seems. But he could be saved. Fissure to try and block him out. The Tombstone on the other side of the Fissure. Slowing down maybe and forcing him back as Hal goes in on this. He's engaging on the MMY. He doesn't quite finish him off, though. Walrus Punch will end him. Zombies still moving forward. There's the Assassinate. Take that, you wanker. MMY's down for the count. And they continue to hustle forward. They are no longer in range of the Tombstone, though. And this is all while FY's just farming mid lane. He's looking to be the carry, but still Super gets caught out. He's overextended. It's his turn to pay. Got a little bit cocky there on the Sniper. No way for Vici to save him. And still no FY. He just wants this tower mid. Xiao has been on point with those Fissure Stuns the entire game. And the Undying stole like 10 stacks of the strength, and it still wasn't enough they're, for they're, them to get aggressive. They're just so good at kiting him. They've got the Sigil, the, the Fissure, Radiance a lot of ways to slow Ice 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 down here. And they're sending the Sniper in first, but you can't do that as the Sniper. You have to play that space game, but VG Gaming, they just don't have enough to save him right now, and Fenrir not being level 6 is hurting them so much right now. They don't have the best way to take a fight and play defensively at the same time. FY now going for a bit of a D ward here on the top side of the map. Shall we just planted this down? That really hurts the map control. Along with this tower that's going to fall top, Beachy Gaming getting more active here. We'll look to pull ahead and, you know, truth be told, Blitz, these two aggressive wards that Shall we put down, we haven't really seen the follow up to the ward placement. Haven't scouted any ganks, haven't actually slowed down the jungle farm at all. Beachy still getting a lot here out of their side of the map. And, and they also hold the tier one bottom. That's something maybe looks to challenge now.
Yeah, and they did that without the help of their Luna this entire game. He's pretty much just been farming now and trying to pressure that mid tower. And that's impressive that they were able to get the tower down despite losing their sniper early and how going down. Look at these stacks just piling in for FY. He's got a a nice triple stack here off in the big camp closer to the dire side. He's also created another triple stack down to the south. And well, you said they're not good at jungling. And look at the cores. Truth be told, they're not. But that's where the supports can can look to make up for this. FY is going to get a lot of gold already. Has completed the arcane boots. Now working towards a bracer. This may become a, a carry Lena at the rate he's going. Oh, this bottom tower though. Once it goes down, super. He doesn't have a TP. Oh god. Oh god. Tower. One last hit. Super does get the deny. That's he's something. Deny for but he is in so much trouble. They try. He may go for the assassinate here, but he comes the snowball of destruction, and they even steal the shroud again. Yeah, why? Like a monster this game with his initiations. Oh, they're looking to counter. They're Maybe. looking for shall we? Shall we? Plans the field where that Laguna. If I try to get a great for the Fissures there, the Ice Shards oh, trap him out. Done. He's completely corralled here by all the control that LGD brings to the fight, but nobody wants to go in on this. They're worried about what lurks behind him, and they know that the Tombstone down, it's, it's just too risky. So they back off in the end here. Tower Denied does go to Super. It costs him his life, but the rest of the team hangs on. Yeah, they're waiting for maybe to get his first real item. It'll probably be the mech. Radiance and once he has that, LGD can attack. just go full on force five bands because Vici Gaming just aren't getting levels anymore. The Undying is going for his own mech, but he's still a full recipe away. Top tower LGD have a attack. pretty decent grip on this game because they've got the late game cover too. Vici Gaming just don't have enough farm. Their Winter Wyvern still only level five right now. Maybe we see things change once he's level six, but it's crucial. Like Xiao Wei can rely on just being level four because the Fissure is always useful no matter what, just for the block aspect. You don't need the Echo Slam to be useful in the fights, and MMY being level 6 is the, clu uh, the crucial of the two supports. You know, speaking of that Wyvern, very important that, that he gets his levels, and you know, it's something that I know Matt has mentioned many a time on the panel over the course of the event, is just the ability to interrupt a BKB Requiem will be essential for this team, but he's, he's not going to be very mobile in the fights at the rate he's headed, just trying to complete his Tranquil Boots now. We will see Super hanging on to the mid lane. LGD group up a bit. They're going to spam out the wave here, getting slightly more aggressive. I'm just biding their time. There's the spell steal. Again, it's the shrapnel. Fresh three charges ready to go for MMY. And with this, you're not pushing into him. Certainly not without a, a gank. And speaking of ganks, Siler they find. Neutrals are here to prevent an eclipse, but they don't get a stun off the bat. Now the curse. That's what they needed to lock him down. Laguna secures the kill. LGD coming in from the rear. They fissure the rest of BGA. Ice Shards keep two in. Almost, but not entirely. They squirm away to the north. And now look to go back in, but they fight without the tombstone here. Ice Ice Ice. Only 350 health. He's definitely in kill range. Snowball coming forth. Shrapnel covering the retreat. Held in place. Can't survive, even through the embrace. And now an assassinate on the out. No, super. Not enough damage. He gets caught again by the Fissure. Shall we? Controlling Vici beautifully here. And without the Tombstone Blitz, there simply is no team fight for Vici. They do find that last kill, the Sniper, in the end. But we, we see some of the limitations of their, their five-man lineup. It's a little bit difficult for them to continue the chase. They don't have the best ways to initiate these fights. There's no clockwork. FY. Oh, he's been found. Shall we? Showing him who's the real support boss. We'll catch him out in the trees and brings down the Prince. LGD though, they've got the mech on maybe. I think this is going to be their cue to start taking these 5 on 5 fights because they know that VG Gaming can outlast them because they can just disengage and not go for the tombstone well, if they want you to. You say play. he has the mech, it's only just now arrived. Maybe not pop it before the TPL. Will it cost him? Oh, close. Uh, mechs as he arrives at the fountain, almost in a panic there, but he will survive. He's going to start walking in now and I think this is going to tell LGD, okay, we can go for fights right now if we want. We can decide to get a little bit more aggressive. Uh-oh. Speaking of aggressive, how caught out Walrus Punch, Fade Bolt, and another kill, LGD. That was just a gimme. I mean, Yao's just been a monster this game. This is a guy who, no offense to him, hasn't been the strongest in the laning phase, and we see his impact in the later phases of the game. But in this game especially, he's just been dominant. He's done both. He gets a solo kill on the enemy Razor, who's supposed to crush that lane, even 1v1. And yeah, he's, he's just continued to do work ever since. And, and like you said, the snowball is just such good initiation here for, for LGD. Maybe Fenrir can counter it with a nicely time winner's curse, but I'm not finding them just yet. He's hiding up on the high ground. No vision here. LGD, they have the five man through the mech and the drums. Silar also going for... The build that we saw from Arteezy when he first started playing Luna in the event, just the more the team oriented Luna, and now they smoke. LGD, south is the direction. They move up through the river, 
now rotating on towards the mid lane. At the same moment, Vici are very far back, and they've also just smoked. Who's going to get the jump here? Oh, they have the snowball. LGD just biding their time. Are they going to show anyone? It's just super they've shown in the mid lane. LGD probably know there's more here, but they're not afraid by this. In oh, they goes go Yao. Right the backstab is coming. There's the snowball. Eclipse is at the ready. It is going to do work on the carries, bringing the boat to low almost instantly. FY also in danger, punished on the low ground. It's Ice 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 next, wrecked by LGD. They'll kill off the tombstone as well. The lone survivor is Hal, who limps away to little avail. LGD with an amazing turnaround there, just completely catching VG off guard. Yeah, they had to have known that the smoke was a possibility, but they wanted to kill maybe so badly. They expend the winner's curse. In some ways, that was incredibly inefficient because they were on the low ground. They really couldn't get to maybe who was in really good position. He was right by his tier one tower. He had that mech on the ready. Even with that winner's curse and the stun follow up, he had about 500 HP left and. After that, you've wasted two really big abilities on a Shadow Fiend that has his ultimate at the fly, and he was on the high ground at the same time, and Vici Gaming just get backstabbed. And, 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 there's, and that's without even counting the MMY Tombstone. Stole it in the last fight. It's ready to go for round two now. As though their five-man wasn't already strong enough. Like, how do you fight them at this point? Now you've got a Rubik. And you can't... Uh, can you rat? I mean, they don't have the most mobile course here. No, not at uh -oh. all. Uh-oh. Spirit Bomb, maybe, in the offing. No, they're going to snowball in. How? Doesn't actually connect with the stun, but they lift him. They drop him back into the raises. How again caught out. It was the story when this team struggled. How a very aggressive core player by nature. We even saw it in the Spectre game that they went on to win that he could does tend to be aggressive and sometimes out of position. Nobody there to protect him. They look for the siege anyway, despite not having a razor, doing some chip damage here on mid, but at this point they just don't feel like they can push into LGD and certainly not without Hal. The issue with Vici Gaming's lineup when you look at it is that a hero like Undying is incredibly strong for the laning phase, and in these early game teamfight engagements, yes, he's incredibly strong. You drop the tombstone, it's hard for people to run away when they don't have boots or upgraded boots, but at this phase of the game, you need an initiator. You need somebody that can go in, tank up a lot of damage, and start the fights on your turf. Michi Gaming simply don't have that. They've got a lot of slows, and they've got a lot of stuns that could land, but at the same time, LGD have guaranteed stuns. They have a lot of lockdown. They've got team fight. You've got two AoE ultimates that can go off and win you the fight. And you go back to the draft, where Darkseer was left available into the third pick. It wasn't banned. It was something that I think everyone would have expected after how well CDEC have used it. We've seen all of the other teams at this event start to prioritize it more and more. And they opted to go a different direction. And well, maybe looking back on it now, if they had that Dark Seer vacuum into Winter's Curse, it is so scary. They make oh, their wow. move south. How again getting caught out? Can he make it out? He pops the drums as the stick charges. Oh, that last raid's not going to connect. But instead, FY, oh, they caught out. They look for the initiation here, and FY it just gets incinerated. No chance. He just can't really make the plays this game. They have Radiant such a safe way to jump him. And again, it's just, it's not what Vici bring to the table. They don't have the fissure, they don't have the snowball. LGD with all the control in the world. They don't have the farm cores either. It's super. I mean, he's making a valiant effort to push up this top lane and pressure them back. And he does have a better KDA than you would expect out of a sniper in a game like this, but... This is a hero that used to be able to come back, but this isn't the type of lineup for that. He doesn't have anybody that can initiate for him. There's no AoE control aside from the Winner's Curse. And even the Winner's Curse isn't even being used very efficiently in these fights. It's, it's tough to find a good setup here, to be fair. And yeah, they're, they're not able to lock heroes down. And you look at when Sniper was really popular, the two biggest heroes at that time in 6.83 to, to kind of counter him were, we saw Clockwork at DAC and we saw Earthshaker offensively and defensively to protect him or to, to set up kills on a mid. Teams who didn't have one of those, or maybe like a Storm Spirit, really struggled to control him. And well, we're seeing in this game, LGD have the new, the, the new I wouldn't even call it flavor of the month, but just the new extremely strong long range initiator in the Tusk and they have the Earthshaker. There's so many ways to get the jump on the, the Dwarf when it comes to a true 5v5 fight that no matter how farmed you get, you worry about his ability to stay alive. He does have the Yasha now, and, and they're they trying to farm it. Dropped. They're trying to farm the Ancients here, using the zombies to tank, but yeah, it's again how walking into LGD, Fissure will catch him, Ice Shards will further keep him in place, and they snowball, they stun him, uppercut again how Just the punching bag for LGD. He is bruised and battered. This is not Hal's game. Radiant's One, six, and three. Razor again. We don't Radiant's want to harp on it too much, but this is a hero that was meant to do a lot better in that laning phase, and 
He's been playing almost overly aggressive to try to get back into the game and catch up. But Razor's not one of those heroes. When you're this under farm, they're going to punish you every single time. And it almost feels like he thinks that his team can get there in time because of how tanky he is. But all he really has is an Ogre Club and a Drum of Endurance in 20 minutes. There's no mech on the way for him. It's on the Undying. He doesn't even quite have it yet. And Ice 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 has had these components for some time. His bottom lane, Fenrir, tries to retreat through the trees. Ice Charts actually blocks Shao Wait, Will he just go for a blind stun? He's too late. The snowball. Well, uh, that's not the right direction. Yeah, we'll end up retreating, but a bit too late there. So he does make it out. It, it still feels like kind of a small victory, but you do see the, the game plan emerging here for Beachy is aggressive risk taking. Super. Oh, my. Well, there used to be a sniper there. How chasing in. Hunting for maybe, but a double shrapnel pop will prevent the chase. Uh, that's at the tier two tower blitz. Like they're they're just running all over this team. It's those aggressive wards right now. And Fenrir, I like this decision for him to go for a gem at this point in the game. There's not a whole lot of items that he can buy himself. Like the glimmer cape is way too far away. There's no way that they're gonna win a fight before that. So the better thing to do is to try to finally get vision on the map or take it away from LGD so they can't get so aggressive on you. But LGD, they had perfect vision behind that tower. They were able to go in and kill him in front of pretty much everybody. And there's really very little that they can do about it because they just don't have hard lockdown stuns. All right, how do you even walk into this fight? No Blink Dagger on Fenrir. FY, no Yule Scepter. Looks like he wants to build towards it, but they just don't have that way to start the fight. It's, it's like they have to allow LGD to come to them, which gives LGD all the time they could ever ask for to get their next round of items. Silar could complete a BKB if he wants. He's got the 3,000 gold. Maybe considering a different item or even a Sanjin Yasha potentially. Yao, Glimmer Cape complete on the offlane Tusk. We've seen maybe go back into a Yasha, so a very mobile build from him. Xiao Wei also got his Blink Dagger, and even Momoya. MMY, he's got the four Staff now. They're all getting their key items. They control the map. Vici Gaming, this is a team that likes to play aggressive. You go back to how they really came on fire but six to nine months ago, maybe even a year ago, when it was all about the dual roam, the early game pressure of FY and Fenrir. And they have changed up their strategy a little bit here, and we've seen them have a lot of success, but normally by this point in the game, they are the ones in the driver's seat, and I feel like they haven't controlled the game at all, aside from that one time when LGD overextended bottom and they got the double kill in the Undying. They're just, they just have to play reactionary, and it's just not really the Vici game you like. Oh, <laughs> going for the plays. That would have been sick. If there's somebody there... <laughs> I think he's just... I think he realizes the type of advantage that he has at this point. Like, they don't even need the Requiem, yeah, let's like, be honest. If it, if it works and it looks cool, that's a highlight video. If it doesn't, whatever. <laughs> I'll kind of kill the creep wave. I, I, I don't think he's actually thinking about the highlight reel, but it's just a, it's a nice one. Top lane, it's top lane, FY caught out. There's the combo, and he's dead. They, they're trying to split push, but it, it's just not being allowed. LGD are so mobile. Maybe Blink, Sanj, and Yasha. You've got the Snowball, the, the additional Blink on Xiao 8, plus the catch range of a Fissure, and the Force Staff. Like, split push is tough for Vici, and they are not mobile. There's no Anti-Mage this game, no elusive Phantom Lancer, no Storm Spirit, who we've seen a lot of this event. They just struggle to get out on the map, but you can see they know they can't get bottled up. They have to take these risks, and unfortunately, none of these risks are paying off. I think it's one of those situations where the Lina... I think she actually played that correctly. She's got uh, enough farm right now so that she can solo contest the hero, but at the same time, you have to open up the map in some ways. By going there, Super's going to have a little bit more space at this bottom lane, and the Lina dies, but you trade it for information and to get your carry a little bit more farm. You can't just stay bottlenecked into your base the entire time. Like Somebody has to rotate around the map to make that happen. Otherwise, LGD just continues to outfarm you. They wait for Roshans, and they play a very formulaic game. You have to just kind of force them to still play reactionary Dota, which is why you see how go to this top lane, because he wants them all to come up here, then he'll TP out, then you'll open up space on another side of the map. And this is really the LGD way, the, the Xiao Wait way. He, the script is, you get ahead here, you control the map, and like you said, you wait for the next Aegis, you continue to farm, and then once you've got your key items to be able to break the base safely, then you go for the push. They're not quite there yet, mainly because it, it seems like they want this next Roshan, but once they get it, Blitz, they've got a BKB on the Luna and the Shadow Fiend of maybe, even if he doesn't get one, he's already tanking up in his own right and probably will be the Aegis carrier, so... It's just, it's, it's a very straightforward game, and, and that's the kind where it feels like LGD have really thrived throughout the event. Right now, Vici Gaming, 
They have to make something happen at the same time, and I think it's gonna come when you see the Razor get a BKB. That's their next timing here. They're going in. in this mid lane. Another jump again. It's onto how the echoes there as well. Fenrir trying to protect it with the cold embrace. We'll keep him alive, but up on the high ground, Ice 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 is being pummeled by maybe the Sanji Yasha. Almost enough to get the kill. Very well timed. Winter's curse there to save him. So maybe says, screw it. Eat the requiem of Super Dead. And then the Eclipse and Vici are routed and largely slaughtered. The ones that survive limp back towards the well with no real cooldowns to, to hold off this round two of the assault. And the, uh, LGD are just, they're, they're just a, a, an absolute hammer and anvil right now, crushing what little resistance Vici bring to bear. They try to hold the high ground, but no Winter's Curse, and a blink. A Walrus punch, see ya! Fenrir also down, and yeah, what's more, he's just diving them at tier fours and making it look all too easy. The execution, Beachy Gaming are beheaded here in game number two, and LGD stay alive to force what is undoubtedly going to be a very exciting and decisive game number three. They were dominant from the laning phase and on, and I felt like that was where they were going to actually struggle. That undying Winter Wyvern lane is incredibly strong. The Razor should be able to contest against the Tusk pretty much by himself, but because the laning phase went so well, they were able to kill the Winter Wyvern in that top lane. They killed them. They somehow got...